At this point, our app's UI is more or less functional. You've seen we can add new items, we can delete items and so forth, but the app is far from working. Anything you type into here, like for example, lunch for, uh, let's do five bucks, whatever, uh, it's not actually saved. You can swipe away again and it just goes away straight away. And if it weren't ignored, it still wouldn't be saved for future times when you relaunch the app later on. We're gonna tackle these problems in order one by one, starting with doing something with the data from this ad view. Now we already have properties inside here that track the various values from the user, name, type, and amount. And so we can combine that with code we wrote previously to create a new expense item, this time using expenses that's been passed in from our content view. We're gonna put these two things together. Take a button that when it's pressed, takes all three values, makes an expense item out of it, and puts it into the expenses class. And so, we we'll a button down here in our ad view, below navigation title. I'll say that the toolbar, with a button saying save. And when that's pressed, make a new item using expenses like this, with the name of our name, a type of our type, and amount of our amount. Amount even with a T. And then call expenses.items.append that item. Now, although we have more work to do, I encourage you, run the app now. It's actually coming together already. I'll press plus show the ad view. I'll type a value in here, lunch. This will be a business lunch now, which is why it's gonna be 40 bucks rather than five bucks. Uh, and then press save. And I can swipe away and boom, lunch appears in the list correctly. I can then swipe to delete it if I want to. And so our data synchronization is working correctly. Both the Swift UI views are sharing the same list of expense items. Now I'll add another one. Again, I'll say lunch. My personal, so it's cheap, it's uh, only five bucks this time. Then press save here. Well, I have twice back since, sorry. Um, save here, two lunch things, that's fine. I'll then go back to Xcode, press Command R to relaunch the app. And my duplicate lunches have both gone. Any data we add isn't actually stored. So the app starts blank every time you relaunch it. This is obviously a pretty terrible user experience, but thanks to the way we made our expense as a separate class, it's actually not too hard to fix. We're gonna leverage four important technologies here to load and save data in a really clean way. First, the codable protocol, which allows us to archive all our expense items ready to be stored. Second, we'll use user defaults to let us save and load that data easily. Third, make a custom initializer for our expenses class. So when we make one of these things, it'll automatically load and save data from user defaults. And fourth, we'll attach a did set property observer to our items property on expenses. So whenever an item's added or removed, it writes out the changes straight away. Let's tackle it bit by bit. First things first, writing our data. Here's our little class up here right now. It's obviously one item right now. Uh, it's just one thing. That's where we store all our expense items right now. That's also where we're gonna write our property observer to write changes to disk when they happen. This takes four smaller steps. Make a new JSON encoder that'll do the work of converting our data to JSON. Second, ask that to try encoding our array to JSON. Then write it out, use your defaults, use a particular key. So we'll say in here, there's a new did set property observer. Inside here, if we can read the encoded object using try question mark JSON encoder dot encode our items here, then user defaults dot standard dot set that encoded object for the key items like so. Now what we're doing here is saying JSON encoder dot encode straight away in a single line of code. It means make an encoder and make it encode something straight away, all in one step, rather than having a encoder first separately and then coding it later on. Now, if you're following along, press Command B, you'll see that code does not actually compile. Uh, that's okay. If you're following really closely, you'll have noticed I said there are four steps and listed only three steps. The problem is this encode method 
on our items array can only be used to archive objects that conform to the codable protocol. Remember, conforming to confodable, conf uh, codable up here is what asks the compiler to generate work for us to archive and unarchive these expense items. And if we don't add the conformance, then our code won't have that thing and it won't build at all. Helpfully, all I have to do here is say this thing is both identifiable, comma, and codable, like so. That's the extra fourth step here. Now, Swift already includes codable conformances for UUID, string, double, and so much more here. So it can make all of expense item conform to codable automatically. However, you will see this warning here on your screen. It's saying, by the way, this is an immutable property. It will not be decoded because it has initial value, which is not overridable by codable. That's what's happening here. This is actually a behavior we want, okay? But Swift's trying to be helpful to us here because it's possible you did plan to make this thing work with JSON. To make it go away, press fix. It'll make the var into a let, uh, let into a var, sorry, and the problem just goes away. With that change, we've now written all the code needed to make sure our items are saved correctly when the user adds them like this. However, that's not effective by itself. We're writing data out, we're saving stuff, fine, but we're not loading it again when the app relaunches. To solve that and make our code actually work again, we're gonna implement a new custom initializer. This will attempt to read the same key from user defaults, items right here. It'll then create an instance of JSON decoder, which is the counterpart of JSON encoder, to let us go from JSON to Swift objects. Third, we'll ask that to convert the data from user defaults into an array of expense item objects. Then fourth, if it worked, put it into our items array. And finally, if it hasn't worked, make it an empty array. So inside our expenses class here, I'm gonna say as a new initializer, and this will say, if we can get saved items from user defaults dot standard dot data for key items, Remember, this must be exactly the same, including case, as what we're writing to up here. If we can read saved items, can we decode them? Let's find out. If let decoded items is try question mark, JSON decoder dot decode. And this time I'll say uh, an array of expense item dot self from our saved items object. If we can do that, then our items array is decoded items and exit the initializer. Otherwise, if either of those two fail, items is an empty array. The two key parts of this are this data for key line, which attempts to read whatever's in that items object as a data object, read it back out. We then say, try and decode that data into an array of expense items. That's what it's doing here. Now it's very, very common to a little double take when you see code like this. Array of expense item dot self. What does a dot self actually mean here? If we had said just that, expense item array like that, Swift would want to know what we mean. Do we actually try and make one of these things? Are we making an empty array of expense items here? Are we planning to reference some kind of property or method on this stuff? What does it mean? To avoid confusion, we mean I refer to the type itself, the actual whole thing. Give me a rare expense item as a type. We write dot self after it. And now we have both loading and saving working. You should be able to run the app back, add an expense here, like for example, again, I'll do lunch, business, uh, really good this time. It's like 70 bucks lunch this time, crikey. And press save and then swipe away it'll appear here. I can then exit the app, go to the home screen, whatever you want to, stuff happens, and then relaunch the app. And we should find lunch is there as before. It's not finished quite yet though. Let's add some final polish.